Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Clara and I am an undergraduate liberal arts student and today I'll be sharing the UCAS personal statement I used to apply for law with German law in the United Kingdom. I applied to five universities for the October deadline, namely Oxford University, um, and I submitted an open application. So in case you're familiar with the collegiate system, that means that I chose not to apply to a specific college and was then assigned one that reviewed my application. University College London, King's College London, Queen Mary University of London, and the University of Edinburgh. In addition to the personal statement, Oxford, UCL, and KCL required me to take the National Admissions Test for Law, or LNAT. I was accepted by all of the London schools, and I was invited for interviews at Oxford and then rejected by the university. Lastly, Edinburgh rejected me, which makes a lot of sense considering that um, nothing in my personal statement indicated why I'd want to study Scottish law, and furthermore, um, I had just applied to that university because I did have that fifth slot um, um, that I could apply for, but I wasn't sure which university I wanted to pick, so I just indicated Edinburgh. Just for some context, um, I mainly focused on my education, what sparked my interest in the subject I applied for, and supercurriculars in the personal statement. That means that extracurricular activities directly related to the subject I was applying for were in it, but I barely mentioned other extracurricular activities. Um, the ones that I did put in there, I tried to link to law with German law, which is the subject I was applying for. On another note, before getting into the actual personal statements, I want to mention that this is not a guideline for how you should write your personal statement, and UCAS does check for plagiarism. So please do not copy any parts of mine. Nonetheless, I think it can be helpful to read example statements for the subject you're applying for or for a different subject to get an idea of the register people use, how they craft a narrative, and generally tie together the different parts of their statement. So without further ado, let's get on to my actual statement. So here's part one. Reading civil rights lawyer Brian Stevenson's memoir, Just Mercy, sparked my interest in law and taught me the value of adequate representation in legal proceedings. Stevenson recounts the challenge of defending incarcerated individuals of marginalized groups who had previously lacked legal representation or whose former lawyers failed to introduce crucial evidence in the initial trial. His successful but arduous advocacy cast light both on the flaws in the judiciary and the role which lawyers can play in bringing about equality. So I think a key takeaway from the first paragraph is that um, it can be helpful to start off with what sparked your interest in the subject you're applying for, because that can help you craft that coherent narrative that the admissions officers are looking for when they read through your personal statement. And um, I chose to focus on a specific book that I found really, really interesting and convinced me even more to apply for the subject. And I feel like having that one point of reference that you could even make references to within the statement again or kind of use to tie it together is really helpful. Now to part two. This led me to familiarize myself with legal issues by listening to online law lectures and BBC's Law in Action podcasts, which demonstrated that legal questions are embedded in all aspects of our everyday lives, as well as introducing me to the British judiciary. Questions such as how the law could adapt to jurors' exposure to bias regarding ongoing cases through the social media, or which laws apply in automated cars proved to me the ever-changing nature of law with which rendered the field of study exciting and dynamic to me. So what I do in part two is I go beyond that first moment of inspiration and interest to how I further pursued that interest beyond just class material and to kind of do, to show them that I did my research and that I know what I'm applying for. So I think that in general, listening to podcasts um, from reliable sources that are related to the subject you're interested in is really helpful. Just keeping up with the news, especially if you're going for interviews, it can be helpful to back up things you say in those interviews. And 
something that I took away from a, a video that was um, made by the University of Oxford is that you have specific questions in there. So questions such as blah, 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 show to me kind of the importance of the subject or made me engage more with it or whatever it is. Because um, that makes it really concrete. It shows how you engage with the material. That's really important. You can't just mention the book you read or the podcast you listened to, but what you got from it. And that's also a really good question that you can be asked in an interview. If you have questions like that that are already in there, um, you can already draft out answers and that will really help you. Um, and I think that something general, maybe obvious as well, is that you say why the field is important to you, kind of why does the world need this, right? How is it connected to my life? Now on to part three. I hope that the familiarization with two inherently different legal systems will provide me with the framework to contextualize international law and relations. I consider Britain's legal system to be of global relevance because of the state's colonial history, its permanent seat in the UN Security Council, and the significance of the English language. By comparing German and British law, I aspire to identify the reasons for differences deriving their respective benefits and detriments, which I deem essential for improving our democracies. I could gain insight into the university system of my country of origin while profiting from the British tutorial system. My experiences with language summer courses can attest to the fact that I learn it best in small groups where I am maximally challenged and have a platform to express my thoughts on subject matter. My bilingual education renders me fluent in English and German, and through the study of blank language, French, and Spanish, I have developed an appreciation for linguistic precision and detail which are necessary for realizing the impact that minor language-related differences can have on a legal document. When drafting and amending resolutions as a part of the Model UN program, I have learned to pay close attention to loopholes and outline arguments in a coherent and persuasive manner. As a chair, I facilitate a debate and research complex issues pertaining to human rights and international dispute settlement independently, Realizing that complex legal structures underlie all international conflicts when analyzing how different interpretations of the UN Convention of the Law of the Sea render conflicting claims in the South China Sea possible. So whilst the first two parts of my personal statement were about law as a whole, I elaborated on why I wanted to study law with German law in the third part. I chose not only to speak about my motivation for the German law component, but also why I'm interested in British law since I'm an international student slash I was an international applicant at the time. Also due to my international background, I brought up my fluency in English and German and I felt that I could link that thematically to my experience with language classes abroad, again for the sake of coherence. My recognition of the importance of linguistic precision is also part of the language theme and is related to Model United Nations, which is a supercurricular activity um, that I did in high school. So I thought that that would be a logical transition to my experience with MU1. Now let's get on to part four. My ambition to study law is rooted in my dream to eliminate all forms of inequality. In addition to raising money for feminist organizations and leading discussions on gender and parity, as the leader of my school's feminist initiative, I have propagated awareness around diversity and equal rights as a journalist for my school's newspaper and a quarterly journal on diversity. As an intern for a German newspaper, I drafted articles in German, six of which were published. Through my international upbringing in the blank, blank, and blank communities in blank, which is a town, um, and my regular volunteering at a Blank Arabic Culture House, I have become increasingly aware of how different backgrounds and possibilities shape individuals' beliefs and conduct, which I believe are essential for the successful legal representation of clients. By juggling my classwork and numerous extracurricular activities, I have learned to work efficiently whilst maintaining a high standard. 
I anticipate developing my deductive reasoning and logical thinking skills through the study of law in the hope that this enables me to bring about equality for marginalized individuals. Something I really want to stress is how important the last part of your personal statement is next to the first sentence. Um, because the first sentence is what hooks the reader, and the last part is what sticks most in their mind when they read your personal statement. Um, so that's why I started off with a more overarching goal that motivated me to um, apply to study law. Then I talk about extracurriculars and work experience that go to show that I've been trying to work a little bit towards that goal already and just to underline my dedication to said goal. I also mentioned that what I learned from some of those activities to demonstrate an ability to analyze and think critically. Next, I try to sum up everything I have written about extra and supercurricular activities by stating that managing all of these in addition to classwork essentially makes me ready to handle the large workload that studying law entails. And then I have a last sentence that I thought was catchy. So to tie up this video, I have a summary of some of the things I found important to keep in mind when you are drafting and reading over your personal statement. Firstly, I think it's really important to make sure it sounds like you. Um, what you can do is you can ask a friend or a family member or anyone who knows you, ideally multiple people, um, to read through your personal statement and tell you if they think it sounds like you. Um, because you want to be accepted by a university for who you are and not for who you think that the institution wants you to be. Secondly, avoid cliches. So don't overgeneralize. Don't refer to all of the books that everyone else is using in their personal statement. And avoid cliches like, ever since I was little, I've wanted to... That's an exaggeration and not particularly relevant to your current motivation to study that subject. Uh, thirdly, don't just list things. So if you do mention something, explain why it's important, what you learned from it, how it relates to the subject. Just make sure to show that you can think critically. Um, write things in question form. So say that questions such as X, Y, and Z kind of motivated me to do further research or to apply for the subject or whatever it is. Then uh, do mention additional research, readings, etc. that you have done outside class to prove that you're really motivated um, to study that subject. You can also talk about classes you took in school, um, if they are of relevance, and then refer to specific projects, maybe some extra um, credit project you did or uh, just do some more analysis not just list those again um, generally show don't tell don't say I'm really great at writing prove it to them you know uh, in the way you structure your personal statement or uh, talk about past experiences and craft it in such a way that that message is conveyed without you saying it explicitly then have multiple people read through it um, to ensure that the spelling and grammar and other things are okay. Also run it through a spell checker, but I think it's important to keep in mind that spell checkers are imperfect. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, give me a like and subscribe. If you have any questions regarding personal statements or have video requests regarding university applications or my actual time at university, make sure to leave a comment down below and I hope you have a lovely week. Bye-bye.